Many local authorities are now faced with a very difficult situation in terms of the development industry. Obviously, COVID has had a significant impact in the short term in terms of sites which have stalled because of the safe working conditions. However, that is not the only issue, and there are various short term and medium to longer term implications that arise in respect of viability. Um, in the short term, viability is likely to be an issue as it was following the 2008 um, credit crunch. And going forward, it may be that it will not be possible for developers to afford to pay what they have previously agreed or indeed that they will be able to agree what they would normally have done in the past. How do you approach this? Because there are various implications that will arise from this. Um, it will be expedient to look at um, up-to-date obligations and decide whether or not these are things that can still be afforded. Now, there will be a variety of approaches to um, these issues. The first one, obviously, will be to, first of all, look at viability and whether or not sites are actually viable. It's important to remember that a site can only be regarded as deliverable. Um, if it is actually viable. A site which is not viable will not come forward, and in those circumstances that can have a significant effect on the five-year supply of housing that local authorities are required to show um, in terms of delivery. So uh, first of all, um, if a site is not viable, then a local authority can look to voluntarily renegotiate those provisions. Uh, it may be that one of the ways to approach this would be to have some form of profit sharing, um, whereby if negotiations show that the site isn't viable and there's a reduction, say, in affordable housing, then at that point, the site can be reevaluated at some point in the future. And if the profit levels turn out to be better than anticipated at this stage, then there can be some form of sharing um, of arrangement whereby there is a payment towards, say, the affordable housing, which has been um, foregone at this stage. It's important to remember, of course, that there would have to be a cap on the amount of payment made to reflect the um, cost of the affordable housing foregone in those circumstances. Current government guidance is to defer um, obligations at this stage rather than necessarily negotiate them away. Now, deferral is fine up to a point, um, but if it becomes apparent in the next, say, six to 12 months, that viability will become much more of an issue because sites are stalling as a result of viability, then deferral, whilst good in the short term to protect cash flow, will not actually help with deliverability of the sites because of viability. One of the other issues around viability is that of CIL payments. Um, there is provision in the regulations for these to be um, looked at again in exceptional circumstances where a site isn't viable. However, I would suggest that maybe the government ought to be looking at um, whether or not CIL is fit for purpose in the present regime. Now, going forward in the medium term, local authorities need to be, first of all, reviewing the viability assumptions that they made in respect of local plans in the course of preparation at the moment, because obviously any reduction in the headline price of housing will have a knock-on effect in terms of viability going forward. So therefore, um, local plans in the course of preparation will need to be reviewed. In the short term, it may not be possible uh, for a few months to see what the impact of COVID will be, but nevertheless, going forward, that is something that will have to be taken into account. In the longer term, local plans which have been adopted will also need to be reviewed because many of the underlying assumptions made, both as to viability and as to what development is actually required, the amount of land that is required to, say, deliver larger housing and larger gardens for those housing, will also need to be considered. In addition, local authorities will need to consider whether or not the amount that they charge in their CIL charging schedules 
meet the tests in the CIL regs, which require that the charge should be set at a level which does not render development unviable. In the present circumstances, it must be questionable whether or not a lot of charging schedules at the moment still comply with that test. Ultimately, it remains to be seen whether or not the government will reintroduce the provisions of Section 106 BA, which were introduced following the credit crunch. That was a provision that required local authorities to deal with viability issues, obviously in circumstances where that couldn't be dealt with by negotiation and agreement, and provided a means whereby affordable housing could be reduced in order to ensure that the sites remain viable and therefore deliverable. However, in the present climate, it may well be that Section 106 BA, if it is reintroduced, will have to deal with more than just affordable housing and that the whole issue of viability will have to be reassessed. So viability likely to be an issue going forward. There will be a myriad of questions and no doubt um, a significant number of different approaches taken to it. But nevertheless, one cannot avoid the situation that something will have to be done in due course.